What happens at laser tag never stays at laser tag. Laser. Laser on focus tag talk. Laser on focus tag talk. I feel like you could be like in Ghostbusters or something. Like oh my god, you have got some stories. Let's talk about laser tag. Who knew you were a laser tag legend? Time to get laser unfocused. Tag talk with Tivia. As we approach the 40th anniversary of Photon, we're celebrating all aspects of the game that launched the laser tag industry. And one facet of Photon worth noting is the television series that launched in 1986. Today, I'm being joined by singer and recording artist Loretta Haywood, who was the actress who played Tivia. Hi, Loretta. How are you? Hi, Laurie. I'm fine, thank you. Nice to speak again. It's lovely to talk with you always. And where are you located, Loretta? I'm located in London, in England. So I'm, yeah, in the cen- in the centre, in the city. Excellent. I know that um, when Photon came around, it really was sort of an international production. So the Photon game started in 1984, but the TV show launched in 1986. And from what I understand, you were a model at that time. So what was it that brought you to Japan? And how did you end up in that position to be auditioning to be Tivia? Well, I was a model at the time. There was an English agency that took out girls who were shorter than your average model. So like five, seven saying, oh, if you go to Japan, they love shorter guy jean models. So I went out there with a British agency with quite a few other British models. And there was a casting agent who did more casting for acting And I, what was her name? Something like Momo, Mama Momo or something. Funny little old Japanese lady. And um, and I went along to the casting and got the job. I don't even know how I got it or what the audition was like. But I ended up getting the job. And I, I, yeah, they wanted an exotic looking girl. There were lots of different uh, actors from all different parts of the world. And I know we had yeah. uh, some from, uh, Graham was from Australia. Um, we had uh, David Stay, who was American, but went over to Japan. And yeah. um, so do you remember much about the rest of the cast and how they ended up uh, meeting I think together we and being part of it? probably all ended up through the same casting agent or various agents. Um And I don't think any of us were actors other than David Stay. The rest of us had never really done acting before. And Bodhi was from the military, wasn't he? Or was that the Percival was from the military? So I actually don't know how they ended up all on the same set. But none were real actors other than David Stay. And I still actually can't remember why he was in Japan. I don't remember. So it was really sort of uh, learn and trial by fire to uh, put a TV show together. And you were on a blue screen, so you were, we were making on things up in your head as you acted, too. So what do you remember that whole experience? Oh, it was hard work. It was in the heat of summer. I mean, it must have started in spring and because it went all the way through the summer. And uh, we all had these costumes on and it was so hot. And it was about a... 90 minute journey from Tokyo to get there. So it was really, really tiring every day going to this blue screen in a warehouse somewhere and coming and leaving and getting in and out your costume, having full makeup. It it probably was the most tiring thing I've ever done because it was daily. And you were working a night job at the same time. And I was so singing at night as well. Yeah. So I would go do that, leave, go and sing. At that point in my life, I thought I had the energy to do it, but it did burn me out. It burnt me out after. Yeah, it. Um, yeah, to sing at night and then get up and be in a leave at six a.m. in the morning was not a good idea, really. But I did it. We got through. Well, when you're younger, you have a lot more energy to do that kind of thing. (laughs) Oh, my God. I could Now I can't sing and go to work at all. If I sing, I have to take a day off work the day after and the day off the gig. What do you remember about the rest of the cast? Any funny memories or just anything Mm -hmm. uh, special about them? 
no, I don't remember offhand anything in particular, but it, we were like a nice little tight kind of family. I mean, basically you had Bodie, Percival, David, Graham, and me, and then a couple of Japanese monsters who had the, you know, the little podgy green one from memory. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we were just a nice little crew that um, got through the six months together. It was it was nice. It was nice. It was like a nice family. Um, but I don't remember any particular stories. When we spoke a while back, you had told me that uh, Graham Ravy, who played Lord Bathan, used to sometimes get you from the set back to your night job by way of his motorbike? On his bike. Yeah, on his motorbike. Yeah. I w- and I actually don't like motorbikes. But, <laughs> well, I don't now, but I must have done then. And so I'd get a lift back from him. Yeah, I, pr- I would not do that now. I think I've <laughs> lost my nerve in a lot of things. Do you remember much about the costume that you wore? Or any, oh, yeah. anything from the it set? It was very, very tight lycra grey, I think, or green, green lycra with a fishnet body stocking over it. And then with yellow, some, I'm remembering yellow and a ninja mask. And it was tight. I mean, it was hot and tight. So I had a full blown lycra bodysuit on every day with pink makeup. Did you or any of the cast really have any awareness that what you were doing filming that TV show was part of a marketing uh, plan for the Photon Games? Because Photon was a laser tag game, the very first laser tag game, played in arena centers in uh, cities all over the United States. How much awareness, if any, did you have about that? I don't think any of us had any awareness. I mean, I definitely didn't. And I'm pretty sure none of, no, I don't think, I think we just thought, okay, someone's filming a TV series for America. All right, well, that's cool. And that was all we really knew, Uh, which is also why I think they dubbed my voice with an American accent. I sounded like a fisherman's wife, apparently. (laughs) So we we had an acting coach, Jim. And that's what I think that's what you said about me. My voice was like a fisherman's wife, which in English, that's not really a compliment. (laughs) But I got overdubbed by an American, which is really weird. Well, I wouldn't take that personally because they voice dubbed every actor on that show, even the American actors. Oh, did they? No, Mm -hmm. but it was Bode's voice, it sounded. Really? Mm -hmm. Did they dub everybody? Yes, they did. Oh, you see, that's how much I didn't know. Yep. And there were some scenes that Christopher Lockwood, who played Bodie Lee, he would have been involved with filming some scenes in America at an actual photon setter. And for those of us who were watching as young kids at the time, for me, that was my very first peek into what photon was and my very first look at what laser tag was. Uh, oh. Because it was brand new. It, it was the it was it. <laughs> So you got to know about it from the TV series. That's how I found the game. So Bodie must have been a heartthrob later. out there. He must have been a real heartthrob. Oh, Bodie Lee, he was cute. He was probably yeah, my he was very part. cute. I wonder what happened. Well, yeah, I wonder what happened to him. Uh, well, he was kind enough to grant me an interview a few years back, and so I appreciate that. And I've had uh, some lovely opportunities to talk with the cast, and. Um, I know you've had some opportunities over the years as well, and not too terribly long ago, had an opportunity for a bit of an online reunion with our dear friend, David Stay, who has since passed. But uh, prior to that, um, what what was that experience like, joining David on his online show? It was like going back 40 years. He hadn't changed a bit. If anything, he was a lot madder and totally out there, but... (laughs) He literally hadn't changed a bit, but I think he was in a caravan or something. I don't know. I said, well, where are you? So well, I can't say, I can't give you my location. <laughs> but yeah, he, it was, it was funny. He was hilarious. He was the same as he was. Um, and, and then I heard he passed away, which is very sad. Yes. Don't quite know what happened or anything. 
No, but he he is very fondly remembered by uh, the people who because he did found his him. own sort of photon TV photon show every week from a radio or something, didn't he? He did something akin to a video podcast, and there was a window of time that he uh, would kind of do like a commentary on an episode every week, and That's uh, it. and that was delightful for those of us who just you know enjoyed. Enjoyed reminiscing. It, it, yeah. it, it's quirky nostalgia. I mean, to be yeah, perfectly yeah, yeah. honest, nobody, and I'm sure the cast included, nobody looked at it as high drama. But when you were like five, six years old, it, it resonated in a different way. And to look at it yeah. with, uh, with eyes today, it's just, it, it brings you back to a very specific era in time. And there's yeah. some joy to be found in, uh, in just smiling and laughing at, you know, the the enjoyment of, yeah. of that from a different perspective now. So David was delightful in that, uh, you know, he, he, he knew what it was and he just had fun with it. He had a lot of fun with it. And he, I mean, he just took it to another level. I mean, he, he's an actor at the end of the day, he's an actor and an American and they are quite like that. They'll take something and run with it. But I could tell he was really into it and he had a big fan base of people following him. And, um, yeah, he kept he was doing these photon shows. <laughs> yeah. So that was delightful oh. as a viewer to watch your reunion with your old friend. And Yeah. Uh, and, and, then, and I did ask him about Graham, but I didn't um, ever hear from Graham. So I don't know where Graham is. Well, Graham also did an interview a number of years back, and all of this is on the PhotonForever.com website, uh, but there are uh, some interviews out there with most of the cast, and uh, I believe he is still in Australia, and he got involved uh, with uh, martial arts and is uh, yeah. very, very involved, uh, from what I knew at the time, yeah. I think was still involved, and uh, so it's it's very cool to kind of Use the power of the internet to see what happened. I, I'm um, sure. He, and Percival, did he ever become an actor or a scientist or something? I never actually had a conversation with uh, Eros right. Rivers, who played Percival. I never was able right. to connect with right. him. Although, ironically, uh, Percival, the name came from a real life player named Steve Holt, uh, who was a photon player and used the code name Percival. And that's clearly where that character oh, name came from okay and it's interesting that uh some of the characters in the tv show were actually based on real life photon players uh from uh, that first site in dallas texas and um i recently had a conversation with a lovely woman named jet clark who was one of the original photon players and she was the inspiration for the tibia character were you aware of that no no uh no I um I really didn't know much when we went in. It was literally from day one we were filming. And I didn't realize there was a history with it or other people that inspired the characters. And I don't, I don't know why they chose me. So that's why I'm thinking, was she, did she look like me or not at all like me? She didn't she resemble you physically, I don't that. believe. I mean, I didn't know her back in the day but i don't think that that was the reason i think that they were trying to take small characteristics and just try and work them in for example um tibia was let's say the original feminist of the show and so oh, right. i think that might have stemmed from just uh you know the experience that the jet might have had playing in a photon arena with a, a lot of male players i think you have to really be be tough and stand up for yourself and be yeah. you know that strong woman and so i think that that was probably some of what they they took to put into uh, the Tibia character. And um, Lord Bathan, who showed up on screen as a robot or a cyborg or whatever you want yeah. to call it back in the day, uh, th that character was modeled after the aesthetics of a real-life uh, Photon Dallas manager named Bathan Miller. And Bathan oh. Miller had that mustache. He had that long hair. Oh, <laughs> that character God. was wow. no question uh, designed to uh, to pay homage to a real life uh, manager of Photon, and so right. there is a real life Bathan. Oh, okay, yeah, wow. So they did really base everyone off someone. 
in a lot of instances, and I, I can't say that I know the whole history of what might have inspired what. I understand that the Leon character, which was the lizard, Leon, was inspired they were the by a, ones. yeah. Yeah, he was inspired, from what I hear, from a player whose code name was Recon. Now, I don't know this gentleman. Maybe he'll reach out to me and tell me the backstory. They were two, what two exactly lovely they Japanese took to make him men. a lizard character. But, yeah, you know, oh. Tiny characteristics that worked in is, I think, what they were trying to uh, probably get. They were very of. sweet, though. They were very sweet. Mm -hmm. They were very sweet. But they had the hardest job because they had these big costumes. Oh, my God. Big monster costumes. You're talking the characters who were fully in rubber costumes, oh, like they, Bathan and Pike yeah. and Leon characters. Pike My and goodness. Leon probably, well, Bathan too, he did have a pretty big costume. Yeah. You never saw Bathan's face, did you? No. 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 Oh. <laughs> but Actually, they could have got anyone to play him. But what made him Bathan was the hair and the mustache, no question. So All right. Oh. It, it's kind of cool to see in retrospect how mm. the real life photon game experience and the players who were so devoted to their game at that time uh, really found themselves on the big screen, the little screen at the right. time in in little ways. Certainly not yeah. saying that, uh, you know, it was uh, was a direct correlation, but it's nice that there was a little bit of inspiration there. Mm. And interestingly enough, there continues to be a little touch of inspiration out there from the original because a couple of years ago, one of the current laser tag manufacturers, Laser Force, released an avatar as something of a bit of an Easter egg, actually, for anybody who uh, found it in their lineup. And anyone who sees it would definitely say it is an homage to Tivia on multiple levels. Well, what do you think of the fact that your character continued to inspire in a way like that? I, think I mean, it's never crazy. Never. <laughs> It's, um, who would have thought? Who would have thought? I still get really odd emails or not an email or a Facebook message going, hi, you Tivia? I'm like, oh, yeah, many, many years ago, and I kind of stop it there. <laughs> well, I'm delighted that you shared so much and didn't stop with the stories that you do remember, but... I realized Photon was just a short window of time when you were in Japan and just a, a brief period of your life. And music took over as the bigger part. And yeah. um, you were at that time, you you became a singer and most notably a singer with Bomb the Bass in 1991. How did you get into the world of singing and music professionally? Mm, I think by luck, again, by luck. It um, It was by luck. Started in Japan. Moved back to London. The guy from Bomb the Bass heard a record I made in Japan. Called me up. Didn't know who he was. Will you come and sing? Oh, okay. And then we wrote a song, and it was a big hit. And that that was all by luck, really. I'd say. Um, you know, certain things just happen, don't they? Like Photon. I didn't go out of my way to look for it. And things just happened and that just happened. But then I continued with the music because it is it is part a big part of who I am. So still 40 years later. And that song that uh, you're talking about, the one uh, that uh, people maybe most know you from uh, with Bomb the Bass was Winter in July. And yeah. it's interesting how things resonate and reach people across different platforms because I loved that song before I had any awareness that you had had any no involvement way. in Photon. Yeah. Wow. I found that song and remember distinctly purchasing the Sarah Brightman album, looking in the oh, line of Sarah credits, Brightman. and I saw L. Haywood as a co-writer and then found it as you recorded it in Bomb the Bass. And can I tell you, that I must have your blown version. your mind really thinking this is Tibia. <laughs> it, it truly did. And that's oh, that really why so it's so funny. amazing. Music wow. reaches people on so many levels in so many ways. And you were involved with this song that I, I loved in one incarnation. And then I loved it more when I found. Uh, that I was the, the, the incarnation of it, the writer. Absolutely. It's funny. People would write and go, oh, I like your version. I'm like, no, mine was the version. <laughs> Uh, that's that's such a crazy story. I remember that story now. Yeah. Wow. 
But you're right. You were the original and you had that song and, and made it something first. And so I'd love to hear about some of the musical highlights you had at that time. Because, like, I know you were on Top of the Pops, for example. That was one of the big highlights. Uh, yeah, that was a big highlight. And then, obviously, you get treated like a pop star, da, 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 which is another highlight. And then it all goes downhill <laughs> you, can't, you, you go from oh you're fantastic to oh have you got any other songs and at the time I didn't because I didn't again that song came about by luck I, I wrote it not really knowing how to write a song so I didn't know I needed to have lots of songs um but that period you know that one or two year period was really again great um being flown around places and limousines here and there. And then real life kind of kicks in. You realize you've got to write more songs. And then, oh, you need to find a record deal. Oh, then you need to get a job because music doesn't pay any money unless you write a hit song. And that money ran out quite quickly from half a song that I wrote. Well, it opened the the musical door at least so that you you found some base of an I audience. Found and a I know, path. Yep, and I know you returned to the musical path some years later. In fact, it was probably eight or nine years ago that we uh, last spoke about what at that time was your new album. Well, it's called "The Boy Across the Road," and um, it was written literally with the boy across the road, a friend of mine who lived across the road. And nothing really happened with it then. I put it out to release and it's actually being re-released, I'd say next week. Uh, a, really? a label's picked it up and re, re, re-issuing it, oh which I goodness. should send you the link for that, actually. They've reissued it. Um, and because it's funny, someone who was a photo, oh, I'm going to get the link now, otherwise I'll forget, a photon person was asking, talking about winter in July and, you know, the lyrics, and I just said, ah, because I forget. Actually, this um, album is being having a re-release, and um, that's the boy across the road. Yeah, so everything is getting a kind of comeback at the moment. For, for me or from me, it That's seems to all be happening at once, which, as my life is, yes, that's how things go. Every, everything happens at once. And so I've got this album coming out, a single coming out for a completely different project. Yes. Now let's yeah. talk about this new single, which I've just heard and am excited to be sharing. So you've got this new single. It's called Satama yeah. Pagana, and it's a really different kind of jazzy flavor. It's different, certainly from Bomb the Bass and even from some of your other music. So uh, could totally you talk to me about the new single? Well, this song's a famous reggae song. I don't know if you know much mm-hmm. reggae. It's a Abyssinian. It's a very famous song. And I have made a project with a Jamaican producer again, met him by luck about a year ago or a year and a half. And we wrote some songs together, the really good songs. And we covered this this particular song in a 6-8 rhythm, which was very different. From, everybody's covered this song in a reggae style, which I didn't want to do. So I've recorded it and it, I sent it to a friend who played it to quite a famous producer in England, Prince Fatty. And he just said, Loretta, I love your voice, but I think you should strip it down to like Nina Simone goes to Jamaica. And so he gave me the idea, which I then went and brought in some very, a very good team of people. You've got Sinead O'Connor's rhythm section, friend of mine, Mike Timothy, who plays for Dexy, Midnight Runners and Massive Attack, all on this recording now. And that's what it is, the 6-8 blues. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Very happy with how it's come out. And um, that gets released in April. You've got the links to that. People can buy or download it now. And the Boy Across the Road album, gets a release next week, a reissue. 
I've just emailed you the link and I think I'll always make music and always write songs. Uh, whether I want to be in the music industry right now is another thing. It's very, very different. As an artist, you have to do everything now. You have to create the product. You have to pay to create the product. And then you're expected to promote the product and do all of the social media and everything. And that's not a part I enjoy. But I'm just hoping to get out there. It's on. It will be on all the platforms and luck comes again. Um, because there are some fantastic songs on that album. And the new project, Melodica Blues, is really good. It's fresh, it's new. I mean, by rights at 60, I shouldn't really be still doing things. But that's what I do. And well, I love it. You things as long as you can be happy with yeah, it. I'll always make the creative side. I'll always make music. I might not always try to release it and spend all my money on creating it and would hope someone would offer to make it for me or pay for it at least. But I'll always create. And then we sing locally in Notting Hill, Labbert Grove, where I live, and have great evenings there. And I'll always probably do that because I love doing that. Well, that's great. And we will put those links up at TiviaChickLovesLaserTag.com so people can find them. Is there okay. any website or home location to keep an eye on the projects and what you're doing? No, because, well, the, the Facebook music page, because my website has not been updated in years. And I'm not even sure I'll get around to updating it. But I have actually got an Instagram account now because I had to get that. So that's Loretta Hayward official and the Facebook music page. Those those are like my home pages now. For for e everything can. Yeah, I have to keep posting there, whatever I'm doing. But I'm not one of these people that will post all the time because, quite frankly, I forget or have other things to do. And social media is not my sort of generation. It's a great tool but i'm not of the generation but it is fantastic because you get to meet people and interact with people but i'm not on it that much well it definitely oh. has opened up lots of opportunities for uh connecting nostalgia and memories and i i'm yeah so, it's so it's glad. fantastic and i think facebook is something that will always remain and i find that the best way to connect with people well, the people who will find your music and gravitate to it will find you and will uh, happily help to uh, direct them to the new music. It so will all be exciting. up on Spotify and all this because I've um, given it to a label now because I can't do all of that. It will always be found on Spotify or YouTube. I'd say Spotify or Amazon or wherever people buy music is it. Whatever I do now will will be there um, and reissu reissuing back catalog as well. Very so there, there'll be a legacy of Tivia, Tivia's music. <laughs> From all these years of having so many different experiences, um, do you have any final thoughts to share about Photon and or your music? Oh, Photon, I think it's really, it is quite sweet. If I get an email or a note saying, are you Tivia? And I just said, oh my God, that's like 40 years ago. Um, when I dig out my old photos from the loft and I find the pictures, I, it takes me right back to a time. And I, I do have to look and go, wow, that was so long ago. What? But I remember very clearly how I felt at that time. And it does feel like another lifetime. With fond memories, though, but it was a lot of hard work. It, I did push push myself and burn the candle at both ends. But it was great, and it would be nice to see everyone again. I mean, but yeah. Now, I think David would have been the connector for that, and now he's not here. Um, I don't know if we ever will connect. Well, you could be the connector. The Internet makes lots of things possible, so yeah. anything could happen. So that would be that would be lovely. Uh, and music, yeah, just 
listen, share, share the music, and maybe we can create some luck again. I think it's I'm due a bit of good luck again. It's been more than ten. What was it seven years bad luck? Seven years good luck. I think I'm on my third round of no luck for twenty one years. <laughs> well, then the luck has got to change. It's it's about it's got time to change. Maybe it will come through Tivia and and the Tivia website. I don't know, but no, I love making music. I'll always write and sing songs. I I'm enjoying singing more now than I ever did. So that I feel blessed that I have that in my life um, and my work as a therapist. I love that too. So I'm very lucky. I found two things and people should always find things that give them pleasure that are their passions. And if they can make a living from it, I guess that is lucky. So I am lucky. That's a wonderful takeaway. <laughs> And I want to thank you so much for taking some time to share some memories. That is my guest, Loretta Haywood. She is the actress who played the original Photon Tivia from the TV show, sharing memories and music as we celebrate 40 years since mm. Photon started it all. So I thank you so much, Loretta. Thank you. And thank you for your dedicated passion in this. Uh, always. I mean, I'm looking at your room. You're you're dedicated, and it's great that you have this passion. So here is your passion. Well, and that passion started for a little girl in 1986 watching Photon on the screen. Isn't so thank that you for funny? the inspiration, that, Yeah, but that's it's quite lovely. You should be in a laser tag film yourself. You look a bit, little bit like Tivia. I'm going to tell you an interesting little story, uh, the backstory to that avatar I mentioned. So obviously anybody who sees that knows that that was homage to the Tivia character. Mm. However, I heard from uh, a higher up in that company that, uh, bear in mind, that came out right after the pandemic when we were all wearing masks. And I go by the code name Tivia in the laser tag world. And what I was told was that uh, when he saw the design, he just thought, that's what I look like because um, I've got brown hair and masks. Yeah, well. <laughs> it looks like, yeah. And yeah. I love that. So yeah, well, I can see the there. resemblance actually. Yeah. Oh, well, that's great. Do you have your little avatar as well? <laughs> I wear that avatar on my pack anytime I sign into that system of laser tag. You bet. You still play laser tag? Absolutely. Every week. Oh, how lovely that you have that passion for it. Must keep you fit. It, it helps. And especially there's um, some that are now doing uh, step tracking and fitness. So, yes. Oh, it, wow. Oh. It's you moving. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Oh, okay. So, well, so thank you, thank so you much very for much for contacting time. me. So I thank you so much, Loretta. And that is my guest, Loretta Haywood. Thanks for checking out this episode of Laser Unfocused Tag Talk. Listen for more episodes on the first and third Friday of each month. Want to be a guest on an upcoming episode? Find out more and follow my blog and website at TiviaChickLovesLaserTag.com. Tag.com.